close, with ego dissolved, realization dawns. When ego dissolves, realization dawns. But existence has its own criteria to know if the ego has dissolved or not. You can claim at the top of your voice that ego and its attributes have vanished, but that does not matter. There are certain indications that awakened one uses for this. And the day you are not operated by such identity, your inner vision opens, you will realize only that energy field surrounds you. Only you disappear. That is all. This cannot happen as long as you are guided by egocentric identities. Ego is like a speck of dust in your eyes. With the speck, you cannot open your eyes and with closed eyes, you cannot envision. Do not consider me literally. By opening the eyes, I mean disappearance of the speck of ego from your eye. The moment this speck is removed, the unknown and unknowable becomes visible to you. God is always. There, are, there was never a time when he was not, and also there will not be time when he will not be. Nanak and Kabir, they use the God both as a form as well as formless. So you have to understand this. When he says God is always, there was not a time when God was not and there will not be a time when he will not be. This is true of you as well. Only you were not available. Nanak disappeared. God appeared. Now God manifests through his very being and his presence. Remember, there is nothing except God. But God only appears through the creation and godliness. This is more sublime than God himself. Nanak returned as God. The man in him died and God is born in him. After this happening, whatever Nanak said is precious. Every syllable is precious than the costliest gem. For each word or syllable, even the entire wealth is meaningless. Each syllable then is a scripture. Each syllable is Veda. Now try to understand Japji. He says, Ek Omkar Satnam. He is one. His very form is Omkar, the existential uncreated sound. Many, all the sounds are created by friction. Omkar is the only sound that is not created by any friction. You clap your finger, palms, a sound is created. Water falls, a sound is created. So, all the sound, you vibrate the musical instrument, a sound is created. But Omkar is the only existential sound nobody is creating, yet it is there. He is Satnam, embodiment of truth, truth incarnate, the cosmic doer, beyond fear, beyond prejudice, beyond time, any space is his sublime existence born out of his own free will, Swayambhu, Ajuni Sabham, Ajuni Sabham, born out of his own free will, he never remains, he forever remains unborn. Yet still, he is the cause of his own existence, sacred and sublime. Now one can, how can one attain to this presence? Certainly not by your own efforts alone, he assured, by the grace of the Master. Let this be your trust and certitude as well. All that we see around is many. Wherever you go, you see division. All around only duality and multiplicity exist. You go to see seashore, only waves are visible. Ocean alone is 
and waves are on the surface. Yet still you do not see the ocean. You can see that which is on the surface. This is the only vision that you have. You do not see beyond the duality. To see beyond the duality, beyond the outer, you need a different eye. As is your vision, so will be the scene. Whatever shade you have on your eyes will certainly give you the hue. Your awareness can never be deeper than your understanding. Remember that your awareness can never be deeper than your understanding. This is the reason there are altered states of awareness and Sufis call these as various states of nafs. And when you have the outer eye, then you can only see the waves and then you will claim that you have seen the ocean. And this is what happens to everyone traversing along the spiritual path. Use your intelligence to find the answer yourself. This is not the way to go to the ocean. From the shore, only waves are visible. To know the ocean, you have to be in the ocean. This is the reason that Nanak drowned in the river. He is not lost in the waves. He is in, instead Nanak is deep within the river. Mystically, river symbolizes, mystically, river symbolizes the being of an aspirant. And from the surface, whatsoever you will say or see will be false. How can you say that you have been to the ocean? A wave is not ocean. And neither the sum total of waves is ocean. Waves arises on the surface of the ocean and like one of the myriad waves, you come into existence on the surface, on, in, on the surface of the ocean of life. And one day you dissolve in the vastness of its depth, in its depth. Between, there is a fundamental difference between ocean and a wave. Wave is short-lived. One moment before it was not. Next moment it appears and then following moment it is no more again. This is transitory. Such cannot be the taste of God. You come into life as one of the myriad waves arising on the surface of the ocean of the life and then unless you dissolve in the vastness of the ocean of life and you emerge like Nanak emerged, you are, your life is futile. Such cannot be the taste of God. Can it be? Certainly not. Once there was a mystic, a Sufi master, his name was Junnath. He loved his son dearly. Suddenly one day the son died in an accident. Junnath cremated the son. This baffled his wife. Wife always thought that Junnath could never bear the agony of the separation with his son. He loved his son dearly. It appeared son has not yet died. Junnath remained unaffected. By evening everyone had left after expressing their condolences. An amazed wife inquired if he did not feel the agony. You loved your son so dearly that I thought that you may break apart with this. Jumnath's response is significant. It reflects the understanding of a master, one who has known how to be. For a moment, Jumnath said, for a moment I was taken aback by the sudden demise. The same time I remembered something. There was a time when sun was not, and I was happy. And then the sun came, happiness remained. Now that the sun is no more, then why lament? Happiness is there is still. You think happiness increases or decreases? 
happiness can be quantified. Happiness is not quantitative. Satiation is not quantitative. It neither increases nor decreases. It is absolute. If there is satiation, when you eat food and it is tasty, you do not say, I am very satiated. You said, I am satiated. Happiness is the quality of your being. In that state, it is bliss. Happiness is an inner functioning. It has nothing to do with the outer. I am blissful because of a different reason. When the sun was not yet, was I unhappy? Certainly I was not unhappy. And before you came into my life, was I not happy? I was happy. Then you came into my life. Another dimension was added to this happiness. Then there was me and you. Happiness was there. Then sun was born. Happiness was still there. Then how can I be unhappy when sun is no more? Between these two happenings was a dream. Children are born through you, not from you. You are the door, the passage, the mechanism for a child to be conceived. A child is gift from the unknown. Give them your love, mind they will have of their own. And once you have given them your love, certainly something will evolve from within. That which comes and disappears is dreamlike. That which comes and disappears is dreamlike. That which attains form and dissolves is dream. Waves are dreamlike. Waves are numerous. Ocean is one. You can see only many. As long as we will not see the oneness, wandering will continue. Wavering will continue. Misery and despondency too will continue. Truth is solitary. Nanak sings, this is the sutra, the first words that is emerged out of Nanak. First three letters. Ek Omkar Satnam. Ek Omkar Satnam. After that, it is an entire explanation of that. Karta Puruk. Karta means doer. Puruk means being. The only being that does. Nirbhav, fearless. Nirbhav, without any prejudice. Akal Murati. Beyond time and space. Akal means beyond time. Murat means the Im image. Ajuni Saibhang, born out of his own free will. An awakened one, born, takes birth out of his own free will. For the continuation of the work that has been left incomplete or whatever role has been assigned to him. And how one can attain to this? Guru Prasad, by the grace of the Master. As I continue I will continue when Nanak speaks about the egocentric desires that he calls it cool. Kiv Kule to Tepan. When will the dawn of truth will happen? When ego will vanish? And to that he answers Hukum Rajai Charna Nanak Likhyanar. Follow, live by the existential law that he calls hukum enough for now.